Welcome to my channel. What am I doing today? Today I am surrounded by art supplies. Yeah, there's art supplies here, there's art supplies here, there's art supplies in front of me. And today I have one big question to ask. What day is today? <laughs> like you guys will know what day I'm actually filming. Anyway, uh, that's basically not the question I was going to ask is in my exploration into this deep dive into quash, I was wondering what is opaque simply because I have learned that one of the nicknames for gouache is opaque watercolors. So I wanted to know which gouache is white that I have is truly the most opaque. Basically, that's what I'm doing. I am testing white gouache and white watercolors to basically see if, if the opaque watercolors that I have, which are basically the ones here in front of me, or the opaque gouaches that I have, which are basically the ones here next to me, if they're white are compatible or if they're white are the same, what's going on, who is more opaque, what is more opaque. And I just remembered something. I forgot a set of wash that I need to get. So let me wrap that up and show you what I'm doing. Okay. So I have in front of me all the white gouache, gouache acrylics that I currently have and a tube of, well, yeah, they're all here. I have the Schmincke Designer gouache, white, mix in white actually. I have the Holbein gouache acrylic polymer, opaque colors and this is their titanium white along the lines of Holbein I also have the Holbein artist gouache and I have here permanent white I have this tube that I might need to clean up of my locally bought gouache that I found here in the country of Belize I later found out the name for this gouache is actually Centrum and it's locally bought and I think the gum arabic in the Centrum is coming out so it's a bit sticky I also have here the Turner Acrylic Gouache White. I have here, well, yeah, the Turner Designer Gouache and I have here White. I have two amazing tubes of Windsor Newton Designer Gouache, Zinc White and Permanent White. Zinc White, I was told, is their mixing white and their Titanium White is their bright white for highlights and stuff like that. So it's fun to see which one is more opaque. And the other gouache that I'll be looking at here is the Della Rowney Gua Artist uh, Aquafine Gouache Opaque Watercolors. And this color is Titanium White. And finally, the Karen Dosh Gouache Studio. And this is their pan set. And there is an opaque white gouache in here in a tube. And we'll be looking at that as well. The rest of stuff that we'll be looking at is actually watercolors. Okay, so we'll be looking at the Kuratake Gamzai Tambi watercolors. They have a white here and it's just called number 10 white. That's our opaque watercolors. We also have the Sakura traditional Chinese colors and I believe there's a white here and we'll be using this type of white. I'll also be looking at my Stylex Aquafarben aqua aqua um, paints that I have here and I have them dried in little pans and this is just called titanium white. I consider these opaque watercolors so we'll see how that match up. I also have the Stylex opaque watercolors, they're actual opaque watercolors, and they have, like the Karen Dash Gouache Studio, they have a tube of white, so we'll be looking at that tube. I also have here the Marie 
watercolor set and I have here what they call just number seven number one zero seven white and the Marie's watercolors are exactly a Chinese Japanese version style of making watercolors and because it's Chinese Japanese style of making watercolors their style of making watercolors is a bit more opaque than Western style so we want to see if that's actually an opaque white we also have in this big thing here Windsor and Newton China this one right here yeah this is their Chinese white PW6 PW4 so I want to see if this Chinese white is as opaque as the style the stylex the Marie's or the Kiratake finally I have the artist love watercolor cakes here and I think I might have just enough in the corner here of its white to maybe do some testing so we're gonna be looking at that as well and if I have enough space I'll be trying to figure out if this has an opaque white which is the tempura acrylic it's basically tempura um, acrylic paints that I found here in my country that I got in a tour of the Belmopan City I will be linking that for you to check out if you want to see where I got this from and to square it all off I have my workbook here this is my workbook yeah I'll be giving you guys somewhat of a walkthrough review of this I actually made this book for my exploration into gouache and opaque watercolors and this was where I did most of my experimenting and most of my playing and then when I was finished experimenting and playing in this book I did the paint session review with you guys with those paints so basically you will get a little tour of this book and the last section of this book believe it or not the very last part of this book is testing the white gouache testing the white acrylics and oh sorry testing the white gouache, white acrylics no it's testing the white gouache and testing the white watercolors and basically we're just looking at opaque white colors i'm looking to think if i have any other sets that have in white i know i have these which are a part of the acrylic markers so I this this I did not allow this to be a part of the review set because we're just looking at actual paint, not paint markers. So that's what we're hoping. I have 12 sections all pre-lined up and ruled out for each um different parts that I'm gonna test, which is white gouache or white watercolors. So I have 12 sections. I'm just hoping that I have enough to cover because I have a feeling that I might have a little more than I bargained for. So I'm hoping that this is enough. This area is enough because it's gonna go horribly wrong if I do the gouache and come to find out I might have 25 gouache and might, you know, because there's only 24 spaces here and I don't have any space for the watercolor. So anyway. That wasn't carefully planned out, which is on off brand for me, but it's okay. We live, we learn, and we get love. That's from a commercial, by the way. So anyway, let me quit my blabbering and get to the painting.
Okay, I am finished. Everything is dried somewhat except for the Kuretake Gamzai Tambi and the Stylex Aquafarvin. Everything else is dry, including my hands. Um, so now let's examine this a bit closer. What are we looking at? How can we interpret this? And I've seen some interesting things. Now, the first thing I should say is that this is actually painted on, let me bring you in a bit closer. This is actually Stonehenge black watercolor paper that I've painted these on. So it's not, um, cardstock. It's actually watercolor paper I'm using, the Stonehenge. Let me let me get the name of it. It is this one, the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. It is black. It should be 100% cotton. It is 300 GSM or 140 LBs. And that's what I have glued in my workbook here and I first started out looking at testing all that I have that is gouache. I actually have seven gouache, two gouache acrylics and a tempura and the seven gouache I was looking at was the Centrum which is the local gua bought gouache here, the Schmincke designer gouache, the Windsor Newton designer gouache zinc white and the Winston new designer gouache permanent white the turner acrylic gouache the holbein artist gouache and the deli rowney aquafine gouache i have the two gouache acrylics or acrylic gouache holbein acrylic gouache and turner acrylic gouache and i also for the fun of it have here the pointers tempura acrylic now, when we're looking at things at opacity, we're looking at something that is bright white, something that doesn't look kind of grayish or have the paper showing through. And for me, looking at my eyes, it's actually between the two acrylic gouache. That's just for me. It seems that the Turner acrylic gouache is a tad more opaque or a tad more better in coverage than the Holbein. But if you look at it when it's when you're considering only gouache, actually it's somewhere between the Turner Designer Gouache and the Sminke Mixing White. Somewhere between there. And the reason why I have the, the Sminke Mixing White have like almost two swatches is because the top swatch is from the tube. And I actually took aside some of the gouache out of the tube and put it in this little container here. As soon as I can open it. In the event I want to use some white highlights, I have this at my disposal. I know it is not designed to be white highlights. Actually, the gouache that is designed to be the white highlight in this respect is actually Windsor Newton type permanent white. But if you look at that and look at this, it's almost the same thing. The zinc white for my eyes is actually brighter than the permanent white. Yeah. And the Turner Design gouache is the brightest. The locally bought gouache was also very good, but you guys saw me struggle with that. Like when I put it, try to squeeze a little bit out of the tube, it became like a finger workout. <laughs> like literally I had to use all the strengths in my hand and in my thumb and fingers to try to squeeze it out. So I said best I just put it in one of these little containers here and just re-wet it when I need it to be. And that's what I did. And so I'll just label this real well like I did the others. Now, if you saw the video for that, you know the struggle was real. And so I'll have that set aside for when I need it. And just for the fun of it, I also did, I also looked at the white 
opaque watercolors that I have. And the white opaque watercolors that I have is Artist Love Stylex. They have an aqua farben. Um, Stylex also have their opaque watercolors. This is the Karen Dash Gouache Studio. This is the Marie watercolors, the Windsor Newton China watercolors, the Kuratake Gamzai Tambi, the Sakura Traditional Chinese. I also have a few other whites here to the bottom. I have an antique white by Derwink Intent. I have the white, um, the paint pants and Sergeant Art watercolors. I have a colored navel white. So just for the fun of it, I wanted to see out of all these, who is the most opaque. And when looking at this, watching on this paper, the actual most opaque is actually somewhere between the Sakura traditional Chinese white and the Karen Dash Gouache Studio. It's even if you compare the Karen Dash Gouache Studio to the Stylex Opaque White, which they are from similar presentations, it will look like the Karen Dash, it still wins out. And the Kiratake looks like a very close second, but the Sakura Men, look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. And please remember that Sakura says that they dry almost similar to the gouache acrylics. So let me pull you guys out. So the Sakura should, is on par with those if you notice this presentation here. So if I should judge all of this, I would say my brightest white is the Turner gouache acrylic, seconded by the Sakura traditional Chinese, third by the Holbein gouache and somewhere between the Turner designer gouache, the Karen Dash gouache studio and the Kuratake Gamzai Tambi is fourth and then we just go fifth, sixth there also. Interestingly, the Derwent Intense Antique White is not as one of the strongest whites there is and Maybe it is it seemed to be on par with the Windsor Newton designer gouache Sizz seemed to be on par with that. It's not very bright. I tried my best to get as much concentration of pigment or paint onto my brush as possible. I did not water it down. I tried not to cheap it at all. I actually did try to put as much concentration on my brush as possible without just being actual paint. Okay? Okay, so let me know in the comments below how, how did you see this? Maybe, you know, maybe what you're seeing on camera is not necessarily what I'm seeing with my with my eyes eyes and maybe you have a brand of white paint out there that is way more opaque than the ones that I have. Just let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear it from you. And guys, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Oh my gosh, we are winding down the journey of gouache. It's been so much fun. It's been so revealing. It's been so educational. It's been so amazing. I mean, gouache took me into an exploration that I have never imagined that I will go. I mean, I'm actually painting on canvas. Thanks to this exploration into gouache, literally did my first painting on canvas as a Valentine's Day present for my husband. And um, it was it came out really good. I, I know that I could do a tad bit better because I've been growing with this gouache, learning how to work with thicker mediums. And it's been so amazing. We are winding down, guys. This exploration in gouache is finally finally winding down it's been so much fun looking at all these gouaches all these white all these white now all these gouaches all these opaque watercolors are they different are they the same is there something that is similar between them exploring that researching that discussing it with you was so much fun so thank you thank you Thank you guys for joining me on this journey. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.